this evening's forum. On behalf of Power of Public Education Lafayette, I would like to welcome you to the forum on exploring the school performance score. How does it affect our children? It is sponsored by Power of Public Education Lafayette. EPOL is a not-for-profit organization of parents, educators, and citizens advocating for effective and equitable public schools in Lafayette Parish. People forums provide information from subject area experts and offer an opportunity for members of the community to engage with the information, ask questions, and build understanding in order to take action. Thank you all for attending the forum tonight. We hope it will be one of many to come. We welcome your input and hope, if you have not done so on the way in, that you take the time to give us your contact information so we can include you in future events. Thank you also to the Clifton Chenier Center for allowing us to use this excellent facility. Here with us tonight to inform and guide our discussion of Louisiana's school letter grade system is an esteemed panel of experts currently involved in administering the system, as well as experts who have contributed to the academic understanding of Louisiana's accountability system. Presenters at our forum tonight are, from this end of the table, Tom Spencer, Director of Accountability for the Lafayette Parish Public School System, Noel Hammett, retired professor of education from Louisiana State University and former president of the Louisiana School Board Association. He continues to contribute to education research in Louisiana and maintains a blog on public education in Louisiana. Dr. Frank Del Favaro, Professor of Education Administration and Policy Studies at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. He has made important contributions to education scholarship in the areas of measurement and assessment. Finally, Dr. Patrice Pujol, Superintendent of Ascension Parish Schools and the former president of the Louisiana Association of School Superintendents. She currently serves as a member of the State Accountability Commission. We thank you, panelists, for giving your time tonight to address people's goal of increasing citizen understanding of major education policy issues. Acadiana Open Channel is taping the forum, and they will be running the program on AOC at a later date. The program tonight We'll begin with 10-minute presentations by each of the four speakers. There will be time for questions after the speakers have finished their talks. Please hold your questions to the end. I encourage you to write down your questions while you hear the presentations and try your best to make them concise. Thank you, Tom. Next up is Noel Hammett. Thank you very much for having me here tonight. Uh, I'm excited to be here and excited to talk about school performance scores and uh, to also talk about our letter grade that Tom um, explained to us. The question for me tonight is do Louisiana's school performance scores and letter grades have anything to do with reality? Do they pass any reasonable test? And I ask you to keep that in mind as we take a look at what the performance scores purport to measure. According to the state, they're based on student achievement data, as Tom explained, and they go on to further say they're to more clearly communicate the school quality. So the quality of our schools, according to the State Department of Education, is based in these school performance scores or letter grades. And that, the school performance scores have been around a while. The letter grades came in in 2010. So the SPS, as we heard, is based on student achievement on state standardized tests and also some other factors that Tom shared with us. Dr. Edward Hurdle is one of the leaders in uh, the field of test and measurement. And he gave the command performance in the field, if you will, uh, the address, the memorial lecture. And he talked about 
what is that relationship between student performance on the test that we just heard about and the quality of teachers and the school? Because it's kind of hard to talk about school quality. The school says, the state says we're taking over a school, but they don't take the students with it. They just take the school building, and then they fill it with another group of students. Uh, and it's, so and it's an interesting question. What exactly is school quality? Well, if we're measuring student performance, Hurdle says we have to be careful of a couple of things. One is the basic fact that student performance on standardized test scores is a function of many things. About 10% is based on the teachers, all of the teachers that that student has. Another 7% are based on factors related to the school, how it's set up, who's sitting next to you in the classroom. So about 17% of student performance on standardized tests is attributable to what happens in the school. But that big green section, that big green monster, those are out-of-school factors. And every research study has shown that out-of-school factors dwarf the in-school factors by a factor of three or four to one. We also have some that are unexplained. The variation we simply can't assign to one category or another. But he said it's important to recognize that what we have in many cases is kind of the tail wagging the dog. 10% of a student's academic performance and growth on scores on standardized tests is attributable to the teacher. But what we then do at the state level is we attribute all of the responsibility to the school and to the teacher. So we get some interesting effects. One of the out-of-school factors that many of us are aware of, every teacher I know and every administrator I know is aware of this, income matters, family income matters. No, it doesn't mean that a child born in a low-income family cannot exceed all expectations, go on to Harvard, become president, become doctor, lawyer. But the fact is there are patterns that exist out there in the world of testing. And this is one test. It's really a wonderful assessment called the NAEP, the National Assessment of Educational Progress. The NAEP fourth grade reading test is given across the country to random students and districts. Uh, and none of the students take the whole test. You can't really prepare students for the NAEP. So it's a great way to evaluate how states are doing. And it also includes private and parochial schools. But if you look at this chart, Students who qualify for free meals, that means their families make up to 130% of the poverty line, score a scale score of 206. The numbers don't mean anything until you recognize that 10 to 12 points added to that is another year of growth. So when we look at the next score, those students with reduced meal prices, they qualify for reduced meals, being between 130 and 185% of the poverty line. They score a 218 or 12 points greater. So they score about a year higher in the fourth grade on the test. And those students from middle class families, not qualifying for free or reduced meals, score a 234 or 28 points better, greater than two years growth. So this fourth grade reading uh, assessment gives us some indication of what income means in terms of family achievement, student achievement. When we look at private schools and parochial schools, we often hear, well, we need to do more like the private and parochial schools. Their scores have exactly the same pattern. When we put the two together, we see that the patterns are very much the same. Scores vary a little bit between public and private, but very little compared to the differences between low-income students and middle-class students. In eighth grade mathematics, the same pattern holds true. So the NAEP scores go out across the country, the assessment is given to students in public, private, and parochial schools. The scores come back and we see the same pattern. Growth as we move up a year for those students getting reduced meal prices versus free, and another year going up to the middle class students. So there's a clear pattern that shows us income really does matter. How does it affect scores across the state for schools? If we take all of the schools in the state of Louisiana, we take off those magnet schools and schools that select their students based on test scores, because that wouldn't work. We take all the regular schools, and if you're an A school, you have an average of 34% free lunch, that lowest category of income. If you're a B school, you're at 45%, C school at 60, D school at 
And the schools taken over by the state, the F schools, an average of over 89% of the students qualifying for free meals. And when you add in the reduced meal prices, they're close to 100, effectively. There are groups that say, but yeah, that's the schools doing that. You do that in our schools. Somehow we're doing something wrong. And we must be doing it across all schools, public, private, and parochial, because we see the same patterns. But a group called the Broader, Bolder Approach to Education looked at all of the data, all of the research. These are some of the top scientists in the country. And they said evidence demonstrates that achievement gaps exist long before these students get to school. Well, let's take a look at some evidence that we have. This is a local school district that we look at the top five schools and the bottom five schools, the lowest performing, according to the state of Louisiana. Now, I want to highlight the scores on this pre-reading readiness. This is kindergarten. The kids have just arrived in our school system. Look at the highest performing school in that district. These are elementary schools. In the, in the highest performing school, 0% of the students were in the bottom quartile on a nationally normed test. 81% were in the top half of the distribution. Now look at the lowest performing school in the district. Remember, these are the incoming kids, the incoming students, long before we've had them in our system. 82% were from the bottom quartile in the nation, and only 3% came from the entire half of the distribution. So this tells us the gaps exist long before students arrive. We also have a problem with special needs students. Here in Lafayette, you just got a lot of students who don't have English as a dominant language. Their second language is perhaps English. They are English language learners. Many of them come from low-income families. They also have the ESS IEP, is uh, Exceptional Student Services. That means they need special services for mental, emotional, or, or physical handicapping conditions. So low-income students with special needs also needing some help with their English score an average of 151 across the country. Students who don't have any of those, who don't have any of those characteristics, score an average of 238. The gap there is the equivalent of roughly seven years at the fourth grade level. So what we have is a state accountability system that doesn't account for any of these things. They don't make any distinction between a district with 90% of their students on free or reduced meal prices versus one at 30%. Not coincidentally, the highest performing district in the state has consistently had the lowest percent of free lunch. The lowest performing district in the state has had the highest percent of free lunch students in the state. The Louisiana Developmental Disabilities Council is very concerned about the impact of special needs children and income on school performance scores. Why? Because what we have is a pattern where charter schools and some other schools try to weed out those students that don't do well on tests. One of the ways of doing that is to take special needs students and say, we don't really provide the services you need. You might want to go back to the Lafayette public schools. Across the state, we have a very small percentage of students with severe special education needs in our charter schools, nor do we have the, the equivalent English language learners percentages in our charter schools. So when they put this together, look at the pattern for students on free and reduced price uh, meals. As that goes up, their scores go down. The high A disabilities, 3.5%, 3.6%. Then you get to our alternative schools. I don't believe we have a single alternative school that's passing. We don't have any that are passing. In the whole state. Yeah. Two. Two. Uh, so again, you've got a high percentage of students with disabilities in those uh, alternative schools. Uh, the state makes some mistakes and they keep changing the formula every year for the last few years and it will continue to change and sometimes they make mistakes with those. This was a mistake that newspaper made with Lafayette. I looked at those numbers and I went 15,000 going to charters? 1,500. Uh, but this is what it looks like within a district. This is a local district. These are middle schools. Look at that line. That's the relationship between the percent free meals, qualifying for free meals, and their school performance scores. Somebody might recognize that district. Uh, I also took a look here in Lafayette a few years ago. I read an article in the local paper, and it said that Northside High School was not doing very well. So I plotted all of the schools based on their percent free lunch 
That's the deepest income, the lowest income category. And I plotted those four schools, and lo and behold, Norris Hive was above the line, doing slightly better than predicted, whereas Karen Crow was doing slightly lower than predicted. But again, under the state accountability system, there is no accountability based on your demographics in your school system. The high schools really have a tough time with the ACT. You saw how the scores are given. Look at the scores as they go up with family income. This is across the country on every standardized test. Who knows the average score for African American students in the US on the ACT? It's been holding for the last 10 years at around 17. How many points do you get for a 17? Zero. You have to get all the way to 18. So again, this is a disparate impact on schools that are heavily uh, African American. Does the school performance score really measure school quality? I hope the facts, the data provided to you give you some sense that it really doesn't. It measures student bodies and not the quality of teachers and not the quality of instruction in that school. Thank you. Thank you Mary. The preceding program was made possible in part with production assistance provided by AOC Community Media.